I've had my M2 Ultra Cheese Grater Mac Pro for over six months now and I've absolutely loved it. But I haven't loved it because it's a Mac Pro. In fact, as per my initial review of this thing, it is indistinguishable from the Mac Studio in terms of performance. The only benefit that you can really get from this Mac Pro is expansion. If you need or want PCIe cards, this thing has you covered. It's just absolutely overflowing with them. But the problem is to get access to the Mac Pro platform is a $3,000 upcharge. And the only aspect of this system that you can upgrade is the storage. Apple sells first party OEM storage upgrades, and you can of course add more through PCIe. But the RAM, CPU, and GPU, that's all baked onto the M2 Ultra SoC. So honestly, this thing is a terrible deal. But it was so close to being good, and today I'm gonna show you why. Because I am in need of more storage, and the Mac Pro makes things super easy. So let's get to upgrading, right after a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Narwhal. Their new Frio X Ultra Robot Vacuum is quite simply the most advanced robot cleaner with exceptional cleaning power and minimal maintenance. Frio X Ultra is packed with industry leading 8200 PA of suction and AI based dirt sense technology powered by dual triangular mop heads. This means it can detect and eliminate even tricky messes, even adjusting its mops to optimize for wood or tile flooring. And thanks to a self contained dust processing and zero tangling floating brush, it requires almost no maintenance. The floating brush design means it's only anchored on one side allowing hair an easy path to flow into the vacuum instead of being lodged on the roller. That means you don't have to spend any time cleaning it yourself. Similarly, the mops will also self-clean and cycle for fresh water at the base station, meaning you rarely need to change the water. And these are just some of the innovations that Narwhal is employing to keep your house clean effortlessly. To learn more, check out the links in the description below or search Narwhal Frio X Ultra on Google or Amazon. A big thanks to Narwhal for sponsoring today's video and now let's get back to it. Now when I bought my M2 Ultra Max Studio, the only thing that I upgraded was to get that 76 core GPU. I didn't touch the RAM or the storage because quite frankly, with unified memory, you don't need more than like 64 gigs anyway, at least I don't. And the storage I was just gonna do later. And that's the undeniable benefit of the Mac Pro. I can sit here seven months after I bought it and go, hmm, my one terabyte SSD isn't really cutting it. So I'm gonna add 32 more terabytes. So let me talk you through it. First off, I need some more background storage for old video and project files. So that's gonna be courtesy of two 12 terabyte hard drives. And we're gonna install them with this guy, which is actually the hard drive cage that was sold as an accessory for the 2019 Mac Pro. But apparently this still works. So I bought one on eBay for 200 bucks and we're gonna see if we can get it working. But of course the big deal here is SSD storage, which is where I edit all of my videos. And right now I'm mainly using this which is a two terabyte NVMe SSD in a very fast Thunderbolt enclosure. Now, when we run a disk speed test, Apple's internal SSD is of course the fastest at five or six gigabytes per second. Now for an external SSD, this thing is pretty darn quick. It'll do 2.5 gigabytes per second read write, which is very impressive. And if I didn't have a Mac Pro, this is probably about the best I could do over Thunderbolt. But fortunately I do have a Mac Pro, which means I can install two four terabyte NVMe SSDs in this PCIe riser card, and that should allow us to create an eight terabyte ultra fast PCIe RAID array of SSDs. And this is the only Apple Silicon device that will let you do that. Now, if you go through Apple to try to get eight terabytes in your Apple Silicon Mac, you're gonna find that that costs more than $2,000 in most cases. But for this upgrade, the adapter and the SSDs combined came in at about $500. And if you're thinking, wow, that sounds pretty appealing, what a great reason to buy the Mac Pro. I'll stop you right there, because as I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, Apple charges a $3,000 premium just to get the Mac Pro. So before I've even started, this whole video is kind of a moot point. I could have bought a Mac Studio with the same exact SoC, the same exact performance, and eight terabytes built into it from Apple, even with their extortionate pricing, and it would still be less expensive than this. 
but we're gonna do it anyway, because I don't care. <laughs> yeah, that's a big boy. I gotta say, this has to be one of the laziest product adaptations Apple's ever done. There's so much blank space on the PCB, it's kind of hilarious. But anyway, let's start with the upgrades here. Now my Promise J2i hard drive enclosure actually came with an eight terabyte in it, which I believe is what it shipped with. So we'll go ahead and remove that. So I think all we have to do is take off this little retaining plate and then it's just gonna slide right in. Oh, that's so easy. All right, 24 terabytes loaded up, let's put her in. Okay, I may have installed one of the hard drives upside down, but in my defense, I did not know that. Okay, now we're all good. And man, that was easy to do. And look at how sturdy and clean that looks. I like it. Let's do the SSDs. And this honestly is even easier. Just put the SSDs in the slot and screw them down. That's it. Normally when I make Mac upgrade videos, I have to show you like a whole tutorial, but not here. Cause it's just obvious. Oh, I wanna take off one of these PCIe plates. Well, I'll just unscrew this thing and then I'll take out a slot, unlock it, put in the SSD and lock it. And gosh, if this Mac Pro chassis isn't the best design, gosh dang ATX-ish case I've ever, ever seen in my life. And that's it, we're done. That's an upgraded 32 terabytes of storage just plopped in this Mac Pro in about seven minutes. Let's go test it out, shall we? Okay, so about that, slight issue. It's now the next day, and as it turns out, I was a bit of a fool. And I expected that Apple would support PCIe lane bifurcation and would make it super easy. They have this utility here called expansion slot utility, which I was like, okay, sure, yeah, that's gonna just allow me to like configure whatever needs to be done. But of course this is Apple, they don't like to play by the rules, so it doesn't work. Basically, we can only detect one of the NVMe drives. Uh, so a bit of a bummer, probably should have done more research, but I do just happen to have another just standard like $10 NVMe PCIe thing. So I'm just gonna split it into two. I've got like 78 million PCIe lanes anyway. So we'll just go put one of the SSDs over here raid them together and we should be good to go. Now see, me personally, I would argue that it's a little bit silly to have an $8,000 Mac Pro like this, whose, let's be honest, main reason for existing is PCIe lanes would just not support that feature. Like, what am I paying for here exactly? But look, it is what it is. I've got plenty of PCIe lanes and I've got plenty of adapters. So we're just gonna call it a day and work with what we got. Now let's get into disk utility here and we can see our drives showing up. Now I've got these four Toshiba drives that are in my existing RAID array and now we have two new 12 terabyte and two new four terabyte. Oh my God, there's so much storage connected to this Mac Pro, it's ridiculous. Give me more gigabytes. All right, so we'll go to file and then RAID assistant and I'm just gonna do Stripe. So we'll grab our two hard drives first, and what should we call them? Bert, I like that. Yay, Bert, 24 terabytes available. <laughs> and then we'll make Ernie eight terabytes. All right, so now let's see how fast Ernie and Bert are. I'm gonna start with Bert because I'm curious to see what these internal RAID hard drives are gonna do. Okay, so it's a little faster than my external drive, which is about 300 megabytes per second, so that's pretty nice. But obviously, this is still pretty slow. Now, Ernie, on the other hand, I do expect to be at least decently fast. Oh yeah, let's go, Ernie. That's just as fast as Apple's internal SSDs, and I could definitely get this faster. This is kind of just like a cheap and quick solution, but for 500 bucks, the fact that we're matching Apple's internal SSD with just some random SSDs on Amazon in PCIe adapters that was $500 total, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. But the unfortunate truth of the situation is, well, I'm not maxing out this Mac Pro by any means, I couldn't achieve these types of speeds on any other Apple Silicon Mac because the fastest you're probably gonna be able to find for an external enclosure is about 3000 megabytes per second. But the issue is to get into the Mac Pro as I have it specced with a 76 core GPU, 64 gigs and one terabyte of storage, that's eight 
thousand dollars. I could buy a Mac Studio, also max it out with the same GPU, also give it 128 gigabytes of RAM, and go all the way to eight terabytes of storage for the same price. Now the benefit to the Mac Pro is obvious because I've already put more than eight terabytes in it and I could just keep adding PCIe SSDs until the cows come home. If money is no object, you can put dozens of terabytes in this Mac Pro, but it's so expensive just to have the option to do it that it's just not financially responsible to do. Right now on eBay, there really isn't a market for used or discounted 2023 Mac Pros. So only time will tell whether the Mac Pro ends up becoming a better value in the future. So in a couple of years, as the prices start to come down on these, I could definitely see them being appealing on the secondhand market. But really the story here is just, what a wasted opportunity. I was looking forward to an Apple Silicon Mac Pro ever since WWDC of 2020 when they announced that Apple Silicon was going to happen. I thought, hey, the Mac Pro is Apple's ultimate computer. Surely they're not just gonna phone it in. But then they phoned it in. And what we're left with is this incredible piece of engineering with Apple Silicon kind of like shoved into it. I honestly wish Apple would just combine the Mac Studio and the Mac Pro into one perfect little machine. Make it just a little bit bigger than the Mac Studio, but give it one or two PCIe lanes so that you can add extra storage or some expansion if you need it, and allow you to buy first party storage upgrades from Apple like you can for this Mac Pro. I think a device like that would be a one size fits all. Anyways, that's just my two cents. I am very happy to be able to use my super fast NVMe SSDs, even if I definitely got ripped off to get here. So I'm very curious to hear what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments below. And of course, be sure to like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one.